Hey everyone, welcome back to Life After Neverland. My name is Corinne, thank you for joining me today. We are on the third portion of our workbook study for chapter 20, Revealing Revelation by Amir Sarfati and Dr. Rick Yohn. I just have a little bit more that I wanted to wrap up with you guys today for chapter 20. We're going to compare scripture with other scripture, specifically John's writings the Old and the New Testament. So we're gonna get started right off the bat today, but before we do, of course, I'd love it if you guys would feel it in your heart to subscribe, stick around, uh, hit the notification bell so you get notified duh, 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 um, <laughs> whenever I post something, specifically in the community section, one in which it just keeps us in tune with what's going on in the world um, and track Jesus. It's kind of tracking what, what's going on in um, Bible prophecy so that we know uh, where we are in the book of Revelation, which the book is alive, people. The book is alive. Um, I did want to do a prayer, but I think what I'm going to do is read First Peter 1, 6 through 7. I feel like that's something that uh, my heart wants to share. <laughs> so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So I just want you to meditate on that for a little while if you have never heard that verse before or if it's been a while since you've thought about that verse having faith in the Lord Jesus is going to be worth more than gold gold can perish but your relationship with the Lord in eternity will never perish that's something that I'm always trying to refine is my faith because what a beautiful gift it is with everything that we've been talking about living in the kingdom of the Lord having him be with you every day and to live in this world that we've been talking about doesn't it just sound so amazing and I think many of us can't even comprehend what that might feel like but what does it hurt to try honestly what does it hurt to try so <laughs> keep that in mind everyone um, I hope that lifted you up a little bit today if it was needed all right, we're going to go ahead and get started, you guys, with comparing this chapter with the rest of Scripture. Like I said, we are on chapter 20. This is the last portion of our study for chapter 20, and then we cover chapter 21, and you guys, we're done with this study. We have completed it. We've worked really hard. Um, I feel like we've learned a lot. Please let me know throughout this journey what you got from it and what touched your heart the most, what you're the most excited about. Um, but I do look forward to starting our new study where we're going to talk about Israel and the church. And I remind you every study to pick up this book and please make sure you get the Bible study uh, workbook as well so we can work through this in our next chapter. Woo, we're learning so much. <laughs> All right, question number one. List the various activities that take place around the one who is seated on the throne. So we're looking at various activities. Pull up your Bible and we're going to read Revelation 4, 3 through 6. And in this chapter here, specifically Revelation 4, this is the worshiping that's happening um, in heaven. The one sitting on the throne was as brilliant as gemstones, like jasper and carnelian. And the glow of an emerald circled his throne like a rainbow. 24 thrones surrounded him and 24 elders sat on them. They were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their heads. Now let's take a peek at Revelation 5.13. In this chapter, the Lamb is opening the scrolls. And so it says here in verse 13, And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. They sang blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. Sounds to me like there's some massive worshiping going on here. <laughs> Let's look at Revelation 7 11. 
In this chapter, God's people are being preserved. And in verse 11, it says, And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. Isaiah 6, 1 through 4. And this is Isaiah's cleansing and call. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with its glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations and the entire building was filled with smoke. Daniel 7, 9 through 14. This is Daniel's vision of the beasts. We're just in that chapter, I guess you could say. Um, but here we go. I watched as thrones were put in place and the ancient one sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow, his hair like purest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels of blazing fire, and a river of fire was pouring out, flowing from his presence. Millions of angels ministered to him, many millions stood to attend him. Then the court began its session and the books were opened. I continued to watch because I could hear the little horn's boastful speech. I kept watching until the fourth beast was killed and its body was destroyed by fire. The other three beasts had their authority taken from them, but they were allowed to live a while longer. As my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. I mean, I think it's safe to say that all of the activities that are surrounding the one seated on the throne is much worship, joy, um, honor, and um, gratitude surrounding him. Let's go to question number two. What do Revelation 21, 4 and 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 56 say about death? Well, let's go ahead and pull up Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. So no more death no more death guys yay gotta love it let's look at first corinthians 15 50 through 56. what i'm saying dear brothers and sisters is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of god these dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret we will not all die but we will be transformed it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. I cannot wait for when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. And the law gives sin its power. But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen to that. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. 
I love that. Wow, isn't 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 56 just beautiful? It kind of goes along with what I said about 1 Peter um, 1, 6 through 7. Let's remain strong in the Lord in these last days. Keep your faith strong. Do what you can to bring people into the kingdom. Nothing that you do for the Lord is useless and it can, it, it can bring you into eternity. It's worth more than gold. It's worth more than gold. Okay, anything that can perish, that the Lord, your relationship with him, that you work on, that you're building right now is worth more than anything in your entire life that you could possibly do. It's profound. <laughs> okay, question number three. Only four times did a voice proceed from the throne in Revelation. What were the messages of this voice? Revelation 16, 17. Then the 17th angel poured out his bowl into the air and a mighty shout came from the throne in the temple saying, it is finished. So what was said? What was the voice saying? It is finished. And let's see what the voice says in Revelation 19, five. And from the throne came a voice that said, praise our God, all his servants, all who fear him from the least to the greatest. And lastly, the voice might say something in Revelation 21, five. And I believe according to this book in a mirror, it says, there are two statements that are made. <laughs> and the one sitting on the throne said, look, I'm making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And did you ever think that we'd be living in a world where truth is just completely unreachable these days? And that's because we live in the end times and deception is running rampant. And the Lord told us to beware of that, did he not? <laughs> Let's take a peek at question number four. It says here, the Lord says he is the alpha and the omega, specifically in Revelation 21, six, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. And this is identifying himself with the God of the Old Testament. What similar statements appear in the Old Testament? So let's check out Isaiah 41.4. So in the Old Testament, we know that the Lord is the Alpha and the Omega because we are reading it right now. <laughs> Who has done such mighty deeds, summoning each new generation from the beginning of time? It is the Lord, the first and the last, I alone and he and let's see Isaiah 44 6 this is what the Lord says Israel's King and Redeemer the Lord of heaven's armies I am the first and the last there is no other God and we can also find more of the Lord being the Alpha and the Omega in Isaiah 48 12 Listen to me, O family of Jacob, Israel, my chosen one. I alone am God, the first and the last. Now we're asked here in question number five to compare Isaiah 54, 11 through 14 with Revelation 21, 18 through 21. So let's do that. Isaiah 54, 11 through 14. O oh, storm-battered city, troubled and desolate, I will rebuild you with precious jewels and make your foundations from lapis lazuli. I will make your towers of sparkling rubies, your gates of shining gems, and your walls of precious stones. I will teach all your children and they will enjoy great peace. That makes me so happy. And you will be secure under a government that is just and fair. Your enemies will stay far away. You will live in peace and terror will not come near. Sold. Where can I sign up? Okay. <laughs> Revelation 21, 18 through 21. Oh, our poor children these days. Oh, it's so devastating. Oh, okay. The wall was made of jasper and the city was pure gold as clear as glass. 
The wall of the city was built on foundation stones inlaid with 12 precious stones. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophrase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. <laughs> I've definitely learned those gemstones. Like I've said it so many times in this study. <laughs> Hopefully I'm still saying them right. Now where was I? Oh yes, I have one more verse left. The 12 gates were made of pearls, each gate from a single pearl, and the main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. So it really does, in both of them, paint the picture. And again, don't you find it interesting that in the Old Testament and in the book of Revelation, you literally got the same story being told about what the new Jerusalem is gonna look like, and that we are going to be highly protected, which we did talk about in our very last study. And so, yeah, it sounds so hopeful. It sounds like everything that I've been wanting. You know, many of us say things like, um, a president is gonna come and save us, but no one can do it like Jesus. And I don't think I need to say anything else. We need Jesus. This world needs Jesus in the biggest way possible because a man can't change human behavior. This culture is completely deteriorating. And unfortunately, if you don't see it, I'm gonna have to go out there on a limb and say, you're, you're blind, you're lying to yourself, or maybe you're not paying attention. So maybe it's, it's time to start paying attention, you know? Yeah, okay. All right, I'm loving this. I don't know about you guys, but I'm absolutely loving it. I, I think that it's bringing me so much hope um, reading this. I went to bed the other night and I just felt excited <laughs> about the kingdom to come. And I feel excited again right now. <laughs> uh, sorry, the, the light is it's kind of a cloudy day out right now, but then it, the sun comes through. So it's like super bright <laughs> and then it goes a little dark. So forgive me if I'm blinding you right now with my snowman. <laughs> Did I mention that I'm dressed like a snowman? Okay, execute, we're executing. So what, what does this mean for my life? And how does this affect my life? Principle, God always provides a new beginning for those willing to commit to him. This chapter has been about God making all things new. He will create the new heavens and the new earth the new Jerusalem, as well as a new name and a new song. Everything will be made new. So question number one asks us, and this is where you wanna pull up your journal if you need to, or if you would like to, because each question is personal to the individual, I feel. As you draw near to the end of this workbook, what new insights have you gained along the way that stand out to you the most? I have so many insights living with the Lord in my presence is something that I couldn't want more. I, I, to be able to not constantly hit my head up against a wall every single day when I go out into the world, whether it is dealing with difficult personalities um, or, you know, pushing as hard as we can to just survive at the end of the day and not having enough time to spend time with my loved ones, all of that will be gone. Like, I, I believe that my loved ones, I pray to God, my animals, everything will be restored in heaven and, and I'll be able to have everything that I have ever wanted. I can have the Lord at any moment, at any time. I can have peace and prosperity with my family and to watch them have peace and prosperity no more sadness, no more sorrow, no more death. We're gonna be immortal? What does that look like? What does that even mean? I mean, I just wanna explore that some more. And then all of these beautiful, precious gems, I mean, we're gonna live in a, basically a gem world is kind of what I'm thinking about. Because I had told you that I was, I was listening to Pastor Brandon Holthouse and he was doing a study on the spiritual battle and the forces that are working against us and he said that satan used to live in an earth that was all gem related i said this before i don't know if you guys uh, 
caught wind of me saying this, but um, he basically said that now he's going to be locked away while we're living in the gem world. So of course he doesn't want us to have that. He hates us. So it's just really fascinating. Just in the protection alone, that the safety, I don't know what that would feel like. I really look forward to that. You know, when I think about Christmas, when you're opening your presents and stuff, I love to watch my family members open their presents because I, I'd like to take time to pick out something that would really make them excited and happy. You know, maybe something that they mentioned months and months and months ago. I try to go find it and buy that for them so that when they open it, they're like shocked. Whoa, you actually heard that I wanted that? You were listening to me? Now imagine seeing things like that happen to your family on a daily basis. Like maybe you have a family member that's handicapped or maybe you have a family member that has some sort of major ailment that, that's hindered their life in some way. They won't have that anymore. And you get to watch that. Like I'm just really excited about that. <laughs> okay, question number two. What new attitudes do you plan to develop? <laughs> Whoa. Um, new attitudes? Well, trust is one. I think maybe I'll give you three. Trusting people again. I have a real hard time with that. Maybe trust is my biggest problem because it, it it's, has branches and other thorny areas. Like I, and I know Satan's the one that's doing this to me, but it would be so much easier if I could just open myself up to people um, and know that they wouldn't want to just take from me all the time. I don't know how to do that. And I don't know how to live in a world where people aren't judging. I, I really feel like the whole world is full of people that are literally so judgy. It's hard. And even other Christians, I, I, um, I struggle with because I've had other Christians literally be so judgmental and just cruel. I think, I feel like I should give you an example. I did, I did talk about this in one of my chosen uh, episodes way back. And so I'll just briefly tell you so that you understand what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, when I had a dance studio, there was a, a mom that wasn't, you know, there were a lot of parents that really did really despicable things to me. And it's because I'm a very loving, caring individual. I really am. I, I was giving a, so much of myself to these people that I wasn't allowing um, myself to have an actual life. And what was really sad about it is people would just take, 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 take. Literally, when you're that type of person and you finally say no, it is crazy what comes out of people, including people that you think are Christians that would believe in the Lord and act in such a way, but they didn't. And they went in a bowling rampage, turning their back on me, following someone that was clearly coming from, coming for me. And um, they fell for, they fell for all of it. But one in particular, this one woman, her, her, she wasn't following the rules, being extremely, extremely disrespectful to other parents. And of course, it trickles down to the children. And at some point, I have to put my foot down. And so I did. And I told her what my boundaries were and that I wasn't going to let her continue to take advantage of people anymore. She did not like that. She screamed and yelled at me in front of her child. Her child took on her energy because she wasn't getting what she wanted. I couldn't even believe it. This woman had a shirt on that said, I love my church. I found out later that she was a deacon in her church. Now imagine what that does to someone who wasn't raised in church, doesn't know a whole lot about the Lord. Um, that was an example of a Christian to me. It goes on, it goes further. So her daughter tries to throw her dance bag at me, number one. Uh, number two, while she's screaming and yelling, I had a hysterectomy because I had endometriosis for years and years and years and years. I, we were trying to have children. It wasn't working. One of the problems that I had was that um, we were doing artificial insemination. And let me tell you, I was making all kinds of mistakes. I literally was, um, instead of thinking about my life and my needs and that I wanted to have a child, although I did, I, but my dance came first. My work came first. Work, 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 you know? And um, I was still dancing and I wasn't resting and I ended up not having children. But I, it's partly, it was my fault, um, I think, well, it was my illness, but then it was also because I was putting all my focus on everyone else and not on myself. I mean, I, when I finally had, 
I had three different surgeries. I had a myomectomy, I had a laparoscopy, and then it ended up being a hysterectomy. Um, when I had my myomectomy, which is a big, big surgery, um, I was at Disney with my students doing a performance and they had to wheelchair me around. I was in, on a ride that was in line for a ride. It was getting super, super hot. And I, I was like literally thinking that I was gonna throw up. So that they had to literally take me out of the exit because I, I, I literally had just gotten out of surgery. I was still working. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to. So just to give you the type of person that I was, you know, just, I really didn't care about my life. I was caring more about everyone else's life. And then this is what happened. So this woman, now she wasn't a part of all of that, but everyone else kind of essentially started becoming these evil people that just wanted to suck everything out of me. I know I'm going on and on, but anyway, so the point of the matter is I just had to like paint the picture of where I was at in my life. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, I learned my lesson, okay? but. Um, cause I know that the Lord doesn't want me to do that. Okay. <laughs> she said that because she wasn't getting what she wanted, uh, literally asking her to follow my rules, that I deserved to have a hysterectomy because I was a horrible person and I should never have a child. And that God did that to me on purpose. That's just one mom that did something like that. I, I, I've had tons of people um, treat me in such a way. I'm not trying to pretend like I'm a victim in any way. Uh, that's why I wanted to let you know. I made a lot of my own mistakes. I was, God was trying to teach me something there. Um, and then I learned a lot, let me tell you. But, but trust, that is a big one for me. And I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay, question number three. Now that you have become more familiar with God's plan for the future, how do you think the new knowledge should inf influence your life? Um, well, I'll tell you this, plain and simple. I want to devote as much as I can to the Lord. I want to get to know the Lord more. I want to put my head in the Word more. Um, I want to see the world through His lens to the best of my ability. I try my best to make uh, Him proud because I can't wait to live there. I want to live there so badly. And I want my family to live there too. So I need to amp up my prayer life <laughs> and also encourage... Um, the Lord to put his face upon them and turn them to him so that they can be saved as well. What do you guys think? What do you have to answer with that? Um, and question number four, what are some of the thoughts and life lessons you would like to share with your friends that you've learned from this workbook? That's a really deep question that I feel like could, I could go on for a long time. So it's kind of like, how do I simplify this? I just think that it's so important to have the Lord in your life. I think that we can't do it alone, even though we think that we can. We can't do it alone. And I was doing that when I had my dance studio. I was I was doing it all alone um, without the Lord. I thought that I was doing good for the Lord because I was giving so much of myself to everyone else. Um, but, but in reality, what I was trying to do is please them. I was trying to keep everyone happy so nobody would get mad at me and so that everyone would love me because I do come from an abandoned uh, back background as, as a child. It was a real big lesson for me to learn. I didn't realize that I was doing that. I had no idea. Um, and it took those parents doing things like that to me to make me realize what I was doing, that this was my, cope, my way of coping in life. But, but that's not what God wanted me to do. He wants me to look at Him. He want, it, I need to be looking at Him and doing things that please Him because he is the one that's gonna help me throughout my life. None of those people were ever gonna help me through my life. None of them even cared because in the end, when they broke me down and I got to the point where I didn't feel like I could stand anymore, like I think I've mentioned that song Skyscraper by Demi Lovato. Now I don't endorse Demi Lovato at all. I don't even like her anymore. I think that she's misleading children and I cannot stand her. But at, there was a time when I thought she was cool when she was younger, you know? Disney related um, and she sang this song called Skyscraper and that's kind of like where I was at the time it was like this whole entire like all the glass and everything like everything inside me was literally broken to shreds and I had nothing left to give anyone I wanted to though I wanted to give them everything um, but a person can only do so much especially when people 
oh, when you're down, they'll stomp all over you to get what they want. That's a harsh reality, um, but I'm, I'm glad that I went through it. You know, I always say what happened with my father-in-law woke me up, but I think that that was the beginning. That, that my dance studio happened prior to that, a few years prior to that, and um, losing my father-in-law a few years prior to losing him. And um, it was a huge process. I, I was going through so much. I literally was at the end, I was just limping. Like it, you know, and the thing is that it, the society and the world, the culture that we live in, when you're hurting inside, people don't value that. They don't value when you're hurting on the inside because they can't see it. And they also look at you like you're weak if you're suffering on the inside. And um, what I realized, like I said before, is that those people weren't gonna be there for me in the end. Um, but I knew that the Lord would be. And I do feel like he grabbed my hand out of drowning water and pulled me up and he's helping rebuild me again. And, and I feel honored and privileged to be able to do this Bible study. Um, even though I can't see you all, you know, watching, I'm so grateful for you. I honestly am because this is helping me grow. And there have been so many sweet, kind, loving people that have been on my channel. Deborah, Yusef, um, Kathy, Pam, Chris, me too. Um, and many others, new ones that have come in. I thank you for being so beautiful. But when you see what's going on in the world right now and how people are so hateful and so angry and <laughs> good is evil, evil is good. These people don't have the Lord in their life. And so when you read the book of Revelation, you start to see what is really going on in the world. And it starts to make more sense to you that, the God, pro that God prophesized all of this, that this was all going to happen and that we're going to be okay if we put our faith in him. If we believe in him, God and God alone is going to make this right for us. God and God alone can help us. If we reach out our hand, we give him our life, we give him our heart, and we ask him to be a part of our life. That's what we're doing. When I lost my dance studio, that's what I did. I asked him to be a part of my life. I need you. I can't do it myself. Clearly, I cannot do this by myself. And it doesn't happen overnight. So it's a work in progress and you're gonna get kicked back down again. You're gonna get kicked back down again. And so you've got to hold on to your faith. I could literally go on and on guys, but I would love it if you guys let us know as well what you've gotten out of this. And I mentioned this before, what did you get out of this? What did you learn? How did it help you? And I hope that it did help you, I really do. And here's the last question for today. In what ways would you like to grow more in your relationship with the Lord? For me, I would like to grow in my prayer life. Uh, I would like to clear out the clutter. I still have so many things always happening and going on in my mind. Um, so many distractions, which again is the enemy. Um, and I also wanna continue working on my faith. And so with all of that being said, I want you to know that in the month of December, I'm gonna be doing some shorts. So uh, just little pick-me-ups, little things that'll bring you closer to the Lord, bring me closer to the Lord and just to help us grow in our faith and in our relationship so we can walk with him and he can walk with us and uh, I think we need that right now well, every human being on this planet needs that we've got to be a light in the darkness <laughs> because it's getting darker and darker and we can't give up we have to stay strong and we have to remember that we are warriors we are ambassadors for Christ so when we wake up in the morning again we need to put on the armor of God and that's also something that I need to work on I feel like sometimes I just wake up and I walk out into this world completely unarmored and unprepared for the things that hit me and I definitely was like that before and my whole world came crashing down so with all of that being said you guys I, I care about you deeply um, even though I don't know you I I know that if you're listening then you need something you need your thirst for the Lord um, you're rebuilding your relationship with the Lord um, maybe you need a refresher. Maybe it just feels good to hear the word again. So thank you for your time and your commitment to this channel. And um, on Monday, we're going to start with our very last chapter. What is it that we're going to learn here? Are you ready for this? Even so, come. Chapter 21, reading Revelation 22, 6 through 21. And I get teary-eyed because I say it every single day. Even so, come Lord Jesus. 
And so I'm looking forward to chapter 21, our very last chapter. You know, today I, I would like to do a different type of prayer. I want to do a prayer for surrendering ourselves fully to the Lord. Uh, since that's kind of been the topic of conversation here in the end. So let's go ahead and finish off with that. Heavenly Father, I bow my head and heart to only you. You deserve honor, glory, and praise for who you are. You are Jehovah, the creator of everything. You are kind, tender-hearted, and merciful. You love me with an everlasting love. All of your plans for me are good. You loved me so much that you sent Jesus and your Holy Spirit to provide a way to you. I adore you, praise you, and worship you as my Father. I want to honor you with the words from my heart and lips. I want to honor you with my actions and talents because they are gifts from you. God, you are holy. You have commanded me to be holy, but you know that I cannot do that on my own. When I confess my sins, instead of hiding them, you forgive me and wash them away. Please forgive me for the sins that I committed knowingly and unknowingly. I wanna live my life surrendered to your will, but sometimes I miss the mark. There are times that I let the enemy attack my faith. Forgive me for allowing fear and pride to have any place. You can only use an obedient and yielded vessel. Please help me become fit for your kingdom purposes. Please help me to do better. Help me to spread your love and mercy to others by surrendering to you and your will. Strengthen me when fear tries to find its home in my thoughts. Please send your Holy Spirit power so that I can stand up and resist the enemy better. I know that when I give you all you have given me, you will use it, bless it, and multiply everything. I know there is power in surrendering, but please help me to hear when you speak, obey when you command, and trust your plans. You are a loving father, and I'm thankful to be your child. Thank you for my many blessings. I pray that you bless others through me. Help me to let your love and light shine through in all I do and say. Bless everyone in my sphere of influence. Touch them with the finger of your love so they may live joyfully surrendered lives and continue to spread your love and mercy around the world. Thank you for hearing me when I pray. I lay all that I am at the cross. Have your way in my life for your glory and not mine. In Jesus mighty name I pray. Amen. May God bless you throughout the rest of this weekend and I will see you on Monday. Ta-ta for now everyone.